Hey guys, how's it going? So I'm on the west side of the house. The brick pathway is almost done, not complete quite yet, but I'm already getting in here and putting in some brand new plants because I can't wait any longer. And these hostas are absolutely gorgeous. Look at these. They're so impressive. These are called Shadowland Seducer. And this is the first time I've ever planted this particular variety. So I'm very excited about it. I think they're gonna really do well in this position. They're gonna be right underneath this giant juniper tree here, which is sporting the face. I don't know if the previous owners put this on the tree or if the owners before them did it. I've left it because it's kind of whimsical and funny and I can see it from inside the house. So it'll probably live here until Aaron, he's shaking his head. Aaron wants it off, but I think it's kind of funny. Anyway, I wanted to show you guys this plant because I think it's going to be the most impressive thing over here because it's so bold. They grow about 26 inches tall. So I would say once they're planted, they're getting pretty close to their mature height, but then they'll spread out three feet. It does take them usually about four or five years to mature out to that size and it takes um, consistent moisture as well. And I always thought of hostas as, as being kind of a dry shade lover, um, but they actually do like a little bit of moisture. They don't want it to sit in water, but that consistent moisture really helps them, you know, get to their big size and maintain a really beautiful appearance. So today I will be running some drip right around the back side of these hostas. I'm gonna be tacking in um, to that drip tube right back there. And I really wanna direct the water right to their root balls. So I'm gonna be using the solid black with the emitters punched in. Uh, these are a zone three through nine. So they really span a lot of different growing zones, incredibly winter hardy, um, and just a really low maintenance plant, which I, you know, I, I really appreciate that in our garden. We've got a lot of different flower beds going on. So the more low maintenance things I can put in, the better. I mean, I'll have to come in and you know, groom off a tattered leaf here and there and then cut off bloom stalks midsummer and cut them back in the fall. And that's pretty much it. Other than if you deal with slugs in your area, we do a little bit, but not a ton. You can use the, the bug and slug killer. It's a bait that works really well. And I usually apply that maybe twice in the beginning of the season and it usually works really great for me. So anyway, I'm gonna get my shovel out and get some holes dug and get these planted. I don't really know what I'm gonna run into um, beans that we have had to have this tree here, but we've done a lot of digging and I've never had a problem. I do think juniper roots go down pretty deep, so I think we'll be okay. So let's get these planted and see how it looks. So amazing. I love them right here. This is the perfect spot. I got them all planted, got the drip run, and I put one, uh, two one gallon per hour emitters, one on either side of the root ball. And I did that because typically I would just put one two gallon per hour emitter, but I wanted to slow the amount of water that was coming out, like the the speed in which it came out so that it had time to soak into the soil before it ran down because we are dealing with a slope here and I don't want water running down into our brand new brick pathway and that might be something I have to adjust like right here where it's really steep I might have to put half gallon emitters right there it's just something that I watch for and then we did mulch just this immediate area just because the brick path isn't all the way done but we wanted to show you what it would look like kind of in a finished state but I want to just take a second and look at one of these leaves close up. Like look at the size of it compared to my hand. Just don't look really close at my hand, it's really dirty. But look at that variegation. It's almost kind of a blue green in the center and then there's different colors, a lighter green like sagey and then it turns into this chartreuse green on the outside. And I feel like in a shadier spot especially, having some variegation in your leaves really makes your plants pop. And I know this area looks weird right now. The sun at this point of the year is a 
like a little bit lower in the sky and by summertime it's usually straight up and down and this area is really shaded during the day. So these should be really happy because they do like a part shade to shady location. Uh, the last thing that I'm gonna do today because tonight it's calling for temperatures of 28 degrees and because these have been in my greenhouse and I haven't hardened them off to outside temperatures, I'm going to wrap them in Harvest Guard. I use the heck out of this stuff in the spring and in the fall. It's like this light gauzy material that you can drape over newly planted stuff or like seedlings and it helps just protect them from any harsh temperatures. The rest of the next 10 days, it looks like we're in the high 30s, low 40s, so I won't have to do this anymore. But I just always feel better going to bed at night knowing that they're kind of tucked in, being so brand new and used to a little bit warmer temperatures. So anyway, I have a lot of big plans for this area that I'm excited about. I plan on putting a bunch of caladiums in here, some ferns, some other things. So it should really start to fill up this season. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.